good morning a very good uh, morning to all of you today we are going to go for the induction motor the three phase induction motor now we have almost done with the transformer the derivations and some of the numericals i have put uh, maybe one or two more numericals i'll put and uh, i'll give you some assignment and i hope that you'll be able to do it and uh, let's start with the the induction motor the first topic is because i'm taking the core uh, repeated problems from the v2 examinations so that will be beneficial for you uh, so the problem the derivation which we have considered here is to derive the output equation of a three phase induction motor and explain the factors which e influence the specific loadings now as far as the um, derivation is concerned it will be exactly like the derivation uh, we have seen for the transformer so output equation gives the relationship between input kv of the machine and its main dimension so what is the output equation output equation what does it do output equation it gives it gives relation ship it gives relationship between between the input the input kva and the main dimensions of the machine and the main dimensions of machine so as far as the kva equation is concerned your kva equation that is represented by q so q is your nothing but as q is your kva now in case of a three phase induction ma machine what would be your kva rating again it would be 3 v phase i phase into 10 power of minus 3 okay 10 power of minus 3 so where v phase and i phase are voltage per phase and current per phase this is your voltage per phase and similarly this is your current per phase so we know that in the previous classes when we have studied in the fourth semester uh, about induction machine and um, the synchronous machine so we have we know that your v phase in uh, in an ac machine your v phase how we give your v phase is given as 4.44 f times flux turns per phase into your kw what is your kw kw is the winding kw is your winding factor winding factor and this kw how does it it is represented kw is represented as kd into kp and what is your kd and what is your kp we can revise a bit your kd is your uh, distribution factor and this is your pitch factor distribution factor so and this is your pitch factor pitch factor is what pitch factor if you remember it's given by cos alpha by 2 and distribution factor m sin beta by 2 divided by uh, m sin uh, beta so this is the derivation which which we will not be incorporating here those particular formulas but uh, we are have to link the kva rating of the transformer and uh, the main dimension so we have to write uh, these as far as your transformers was concerned also where in the class we have seen we have interlinked it we have written electrical parameters in terms of magnetic parameters and we had replaced your flux with your magnetic flux density so we had arrived at and we had mentioned it in terms of your gross area and your area of cross section your net cross sectional area and uh, area of window in those terms we had expressed uh, the final kva equation here also we will be going uh, in a similar manner here we can see uh, now our equation q will become 3 into 4 point if this is equation 1 let this be equation 2 now your equation becomes 3 into 4.44 4.44 f f instead of f can we write anything what is f 
see what is your n n is your 120 f by p isn't it n is your 120 f by p your synchronous speed so can we write f f we can write p times n s by 120 right p times n s by 120 or we can still write it like this n s divided by 60 into p by 2 same thing okay this n s divided by 60 can be represented as small n like this n s so we have f is equal to n s into p by 2 we have from this little part we have so let this be equation 1 equation 2 and let this portion be equation 3 okay this whole thing so can we substitute for f here we can see can we substitute the value of f here we can directly substitute instead of uh, f writing over here we can directly write instead of uh, f we can write ns by p by 2 so we can write like this ns okay into p by 2 now we have here flux so again uh, we have to see what exactly is my flux linking so how do i represent this flux in terms of uh, uh, the portions that are mentioned there so i have certain parameter that parameter is called as specific electric loading so here i will mention certain things prior we are going to the next step we can write down f is what f is frequency frequency of the supply frequency of the supply similarly your phi is what flux per pole this is your flux per pole your t phase is what t phase is number of turns number of turns per phase and your kw is your kw is your winding winding factor so we can take down this now let's come to the flux how do we establish flux now if we uh, in the last chapter also in that thing also we saw ki, uh, your flux your magnetic field density that is your flux by area b was equal to flux by area and similarly we have written so in this case also we have to establish so let's uh, try to establish this thing how do we establish let's write the specific magnetic loading that is uh, BAV uh, is the average flux density over the whole surface area of the air gap so by now the, you must have taken down this I am going to rub this and uh, this portion uh, so these uh, equation 3 and equation so this portion so we will take into consideration we will take into consideration now I have to take flux how do I establish so let let, let me take specific that is specific magnetic loading as magnetic loading as BAV so now I have taken this as BAV now I have to express this BAV what is this BAV this is the average flux density over the whole surface area of the air gap this is average flux density density over the whole surface surface area of air gap or the whole surface area of air gap now let's uh, check this BAV we can write see total flux in the air gap would be dependent total flux in air gap would be how much so flux would be flux linking into how many number of poles are there so we can write total flux in the air gap is p times phi okay and area of flux path in the air gap again area of flux path in the air gap just like your cooling of tubes when we calculate the area of each tube so area of the flux path would be pi times diameter l pi dl so we got an equation BAV is equal to pi dl let this be your see this earlier I had written that equation 3 so that and this is my equation 
let me uh, write this as equation 4 because that was equation 3 this is equation 4 so i i i i am arriving at b a v p phi pi d l now i can take phi from here phi i can write directly phi is b pi you can see pi d l b a v divided by p so this is one expression that i am arriving instead of phi i can substitute this b a v i can write b a v into pi d l by p so here i can substitute this into equation 4 this is my equation 5 instead of pi what i can write i can write into b a v into pi d l by p so this was for flux now i have turns per phase so this is my turns per phase so the turns per phase gives me this was about the specific magnetic loading now i have to consider for specific electric loading so i hope you people have uh, noted down uh, these portion so this is my uh, specific magnetic loading and i have represented the phi in terms of my specific magnetic lo load loading and the main dimensions that is the poles associated and the length of the air gap and the diameter for the air gap everything has getting got into the mensuration the mathematical configuration of the machine the main dimensions of the machine so i'll be rubbing this and we'll be moving to see how the specific electrical loading affects the machine and uh, instead of t phase c uh, this is your main equation equation 103 and then i have substituted this 4.44 4.44 instead of f i have written n s by p by 2 here that uh, f how it came we have derived in the equation 3 uh, you have already taken that's why i have written this as equation 4 then it was about phi so instead of phi i have arrived at b a v into phi d l by p which can be seen by equation 5 now let's come to t phase and kw because this value we have to resubstitute back in the original equation now let's go to the i am be rubbing this and let's see how specific electrical loading affects so let's see how specific electrical loading of the machine so how specific electrical loading of the machine effects so for specific electrical loading what you have see the specific electrical loading is defined as the rms ampere conductors per meter of armature periphery at the air gap surface so let's give it uh, last time we had given it as bav let's give it as ac so ac what is it it is the specific electrical loading ac will define it the specific electric loading ac the specific electrical loading ac is defined as the rms ampere conductors per meter of the armature periphery periphery at the air gap of the surface so what it means it means ac how we can define so specific electrical loading ac is defined as the rms ampere per conductors per meter so rpr ampere per conductor now it's a three phase machine so for three phase for each phase uh, there would be current in a phase would be i phase for one phase for three phase it would be three times and the number of conductors the number of conductors would be z so we have a relationship between t phase and z so t phase and z we have a definite relationship your t phase is see number of turns so as two turns from one conductor so 
you require this is your one t phase this is your another t phase so in total this is t phase t phase in total as two turns see one turn from here to here another turn from here to here this is your total z phase so z phase would be your t phase here to here then here to here so this is twice t phase so two conductors two turns from one conductor so two turns we can write down two turns form one conductor one conductor so if we have to write this z phase in terms of t phase instead of z phase what we can write into two times t phase so this was about the numerator part what about the denominator part the rms ampere turns so i'll be rubbing this so the rms the specific is ac is defined uh, rms ampere conductors per meter that we have of the armature periphery at the air gap of the surface now air gap of the surface again what would be the uh, air gap of the surface so here uh, the surface would be uh, given as armature periphery the main uh, dimensions uh, armature periphery that is your 2 pi uh, r or you can uh, write as uh, pi d your uh, circumference is written by 2 pi r isn't it or you can write it as pi d because your d is what 2 r so hence it becomes 2 pi r so we can directly write pi d so this uh, is about ac so we have seen now we can express this t, t phase in terms of t phase in terms of these values now if we are going to express this uh, t phase in terms of uh, these values we are going to have an another equation but uh, kva we can have another equation now this let this be equation equation 6 and we have to substitute equation 6 back in equation 4 so this is my equation 4 v phase then this equation 4 would be back substituted in equation 1 and we will arrive at the output equation of an induction machine so now let's see now here we have these uh, things so uh, i have got ac is equal to so let me rub this portion and let me keep this portion here so how can i write now i can do one thing so 3 i have written okay well 3 is this is for the q for v phase i have written v phase is here 4.44 for f i have written for phi i have written now i have to write for t phase now t phase i can write t phase i can write would be phi d into ac so t phase i will take this equation here 3 into i phase into 2 into t phase this is the equation and pi d is equal to ac so i can write this ac into pi d i am cross multiplying and i'll cross multiply this 3 into 2 into i phase so you can see 3 into 2 into i phase and here it will remain t phase so i can write instead of t phase i can write ac into pi d into 3 into 2 into i phase so uh, i can write now i can write the equation directly here i can substitute this value here i have got the value of t phase what is the value of t phase let this be my equation um, 7 i am back substituting it in my equation 4 which i am back substituting equation 4 in equation 1 so this is 3 into 4.44 nsp by 2 into b a v into pi d l by p now into t phase now into t phase what i have to write for t phase i will write a c into pi d divided by 6 i can write okay i'll write 3 into 2 into i phase so i am here so now i have to substitute this value in the equation 1 so equation 1 3 came okay instead of v phase 4.44 4.44 f value we have phi value and t phase value have substituted now we are left with the value of kw here 
K W and in the final equation you have I phase in 10 power minus 3. Now we can see I phase and I phase we can cancel. Yes, we can cancel. Now Q would be equal to 3 into 4.44 into NS P by 2 into BAV into pi dl p into ac into pi d divided by how much 6 we can write yeah we can write 6 i phase i phase into kw in 10 power minus 3 so what are the common terms we can take into consideration and what are the other terms we can uh, remove that we have to take into account so here we have this as um, yeah so here we have uh, one more value is that yeah this 4.44 into 3 uh, divided by 2 so this we can do 2 ones are this becomes 2.22 and this becomes 6.66 divided by 6 this becomes 1.11 so this is 6.663 into 2.22 this will become 6.66 this 6.66 here is divided by 6 so 6.66 divided by 6 becomes 1.11 so you will have the value as 1.11 okay and then you have uh, you have to see other values you have to keep into considerations you can uh, write see you here you have pi d uh, again you have uh, pi d so you can write uh, pi square d square so you have this pi square d square you can write here pi square pi square into 1.11 pi square will take the numerical values separate so i have taken this and then you have your kw this is your kw then you have your bav bav then you have your value of ac in 10 power minus 3 this value we will take out and uh, see d square pi dl was pi square here pi dl here pi d so this was pi square pi square I have taken here so d square will come out so this is your d square and you are left with l there and ns and ns you are left with l and ns is any other term that you want uh, which we have not taken into account any other term is missing uh, we can write uh, so we have uh, seen ke every term we have to taken into consideration is uh, 3 into 2.22 into ns bav pi dl kv so here we have to see ki what about the number of poles so the number of poles that is another uh, important factor into this calculation so those terms also we have to look into consideration whether we have taken into consideration or not so the number of poles that is your p phi uh, is given by you can write your p phi in terms of earlier equation only i have written there so you can write the number of poles in terms of uh, so you have 1.11 1.11 bav bav you have your pi dl you have d square l and n, d square l n s d square l n s so you arrive at this particular equation here uh, we have to take into consideration this is 1.11 pi square winding factor kw that we have to take we have taken see why i have taken these other uh, factors together and uh, the number of poles also we will take inside so this is your p hmm? and the number of poles also we will take inside so this portion which you have seen here these portion cannot be changed your winding factor cannot be changed your magnetic flux density cannot be changed your turns per phase your phase but uh, these are a constant terms associated with it and this constant term we can represent it, it by a value called as c naught so this we can write k is equal to c naught times d square l n s d square l n s so you have your uh, final expression q is equal to c naught times your d square ln s where your c naught is nothing but as 
1.11 into pi square if you see 1.11 into pi square it would be around 11 uh, and you have kw bav ac p into 10 power minus 3 so it will come around 11 kv bav ac into p into 10 power minus 3 and uh, q is given as c naught d square ln s here again uh, one more thing uh, i have to mention now if we have to convert this into hp or any other formula we can directly write finally we have arrived at the output equation which is the final equation this is this and the value of c naught is this hence um, the output equation has been derived now if we have to express it in terms of um, hp so how we go about it we'll be seeing it hope you have taken down this so let's derive this uh, expression and see the other factors that are affecting the machine also that would be very important so we can write down kva kva is equal to your hp into 0.746 now certain books are writing 0.735 the standard was 0.746 now the horses are not that strong i think that's why the multiplying factor has gone reduced so efficiency into cos phi so this is your link between your kva and kw this is your kw efficiency into cos phi so this will help you in any numerical problem now another part uh, associated with it was so how does the other factors are affecting it so we have to take into consideration what are the factors that influence this so the factors that are influencing this are again you can see your output power that is your p, 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 p naught would be equal to c naught d square l n s into efficiency into cos phi so the factors influencing choice of specific magnetic loading so there are certain factors so hope you have taken down this factors influencing so this was the output equation which we have derived now let's do the factors 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 influencing influencing the choice of specific specific magnetic loading magnetic loading so these factors we will be seeing bav let's see the factors would be the number one factor would be power factor so the power factor is as usual important so how does it affect if a large value of specific magnetic for example let's suppose bav is large what we can induce from this we can interrupt the mmf required to force the flux to the air gap increases so if bav is large mmf increases mmf required to force what to require to mmf required to to force flux increases because we know our mmf is what mmf is your mmf is nothing but as your magnetic voltage so your voltage is equal to i into r flux into your reluctance so if you are see again your bav is what flux by area and if your bav is large so that means bav is large flux by area area has to decrease then only your flux will be this ba will become uh, large hence mmf increase uh, mmf uh, bab is large your mmf required to force flux through increases so what uh, a flux through air gap flux through air gap air gap increases so this denomination would mean increases so which increases the magnetizing current so this this increases the magnetizing current so this is increasing the magnetizing current so once the magnetizing current is increasing so what we can inference uh, we can say that the number of field turns has to be increases so the number of number of 
field turns turns need to be need to be increased so if the number of field turn need to be increased increased what happens so it will increase the inductive reactance so it will increase the inductive reactance that is your xl will increase so once your xl increases this leads to reduced power factor so this this leads to leads to reduced power factor this leads to reduced power factor and hence reduced output reduced output now one question would be there sir how it is like if you also look at the power triangle also from there also you can get see your uh, if you write it terms of this is your z this is your xl this is your r so from here also if you write this cos phi is equal to how much cos phi is equal to base by hypotenuse xl by z now this leads to reduced power so this is magnet the, the number of field turns needs to be increased now see here if cos phi if xl increases okay so what happens to this z so the value of phi will increase and cos phi if it is increasing so cos inverse of xl this is increasing by z ultimately what happens to the power factor power factor reduces because the power factor cos phi range is between 0 to 1 and cos phi cos phi is equal to 1 at phi is equal to 0 so greater the value of phi so greater the value of phi what happens your power factor reduces less the value of phi your power factor increases so this we can reduce if we are increasing the magnetic flux density what happens uh, so your power factor increases because your reactance increases so now one more thing is that what happens to the specific magnetic loading let's see the iron losses what happens to the iron losses if you have higher value of uh, your magnetic flux specific magnetic loading it leads to higher iron losses this will result in reduced efficiency and higher temperature rise for high speed induction motor in order to reduce iron losses BAV should be low so what happens is again So your iron losses is dependent upon what is dependent upon the core. So if you increase BAV, your iron losses increase. Iron losses increase. Now if your iron losses are increasing, uh, your see your copper losses are dependent upon the current and your iron losses are dependent upon the voltage. So voltage in, is indirectly proportional is an magnetic MMF. MMF is nothing but as your voltage. So now you are, if you are increasing your BAV definitely what will happen your voltage in, increases your iron losses increases so if your iron losses increases what happens is now that uh, your efficiency decreases because your efficiency is what output by input so your input is what output output plus losses because this is your input input can be written as output plus losses if this losses are increasing definitely output by input so this your efficiency decreases once your efficiency decreases so it is not good for a working machine with a higher uh, specific magnetic loading now another factor which uh, we have to take into consideration is the overload capacity of the machine so the third factor which would be important would be the overload capacity this would be the overload overload capacity overload capacity of the machine so the overload capacity of the machine what happens if we keep higher BAV at high BAV means the flux per pole is large so thus for the same voltage the winding requires less turns per phase so thus for the same voltage same voltage what happens winding requires thus for the same voltage winding requires winding uh, requires less turns per phase so winding requires less turns per phase so this means if the number of turns is less that means if the number of turns is less so what happens if the number of turns is less so if the number of turns is less leakage reactance becomes small if leakage reactance leakage 
reactants reactants becomes small leakage reactants become small so if the leakage reactants become small the maximum output which the machine is capable of giving is large that is the machine has large overload capacity so that would mean the machine the machine has large overload capacity now let's uh, uh, see to the other factors which are important like for example for 50 hertz machine or an induction motor induction motor your bav should be anywhere between 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 Weber per meter square. Now let's go for the factors influencing the choice of electric loading. So what are the factors that influence the choice of electrical loading? This is an important question. It comes around for around 10 to 12 marks. So in V2 examinations, repeatedly they are asking it. So I, I thought ki, let's start with this in the induction machine. So factors factors influencing influencing choice of electrical loading so what are the factors loading so number one would be your copper loss and temperature rise so your copper loss and temperature rise so at large value of uh, you know current Q means larger number of conductors is used in the machine hence the copper requirement is more which in turn increases the copper loss and temperature rise now voltage can be large only if the quality of insulation is good because higher see if you have a large value of your KVA rating at hard at Q if you have because in electrical factors it is your q in magnetic factors you have seen your bav if your q is large means means it means larger number of conductors number of conductors is used in the machine and if the number of um, conductors are more what does this mean so it would mean more copper requirement so this would mean more copper requirement requirement so which in turn increases the copper loss and temperature uh, rise and uh, now let's see what about the voltage this was q now voltage as far as the voltage is concerned if you can see uh, you can increase the voltage or increase the value of key only if you have a very good insulation if you don't have very good insulation it will result in breakage of insulation eventually it will result in the short circuit of the machine so because higher Q means higher Q means higher Z or higher IZ so higher Q would mean your higher Q means larger Z Z means what two times t phase so this means larger number of conductors larger number of conductors and this would again mean larger current larger i phase larger current requirement current requirement see in practical example i will give if you have a small blower in your home now and you have a small inverter what you do is if you work that uh, hot blower blower in the sense means you are using it for your hair dryer for example let's suppose you have two modes 300 watts and 500 watts suddenly power goes for 300 watts it is working fine but when you switch the blower to 500 watts your inverter will shut down so the thing is that that blower voltage it is taking same 240 but when you are switching it from that first mode to the higher mode what happens is the range of current increases and the inverter which you have designed cannot hold that current so similarly if you are switching the machine for a higher value maybe the volt voltage is remaining same but uh, the current it will take more so hence 
and uh, insulation requirement for an higher uh, current uh, instrument is again high hence space for conductors hence less space for conductors which hence so again we can see that if we are using it for an high current equipment you need uh, high number of conductors and your space requirement is more space requirement is more requirement is more and uh, what about the overload capacity again the overload capacity what it does is see if your q is high z is high number of turns becomes more and increases the inductive reactance see in the earlier case we have seen what happens is if the number of turns is less leakage reactance becomes small now if the number of turns increases so leakage uh, inductive reactance increases high xl what it will do high xl reduces the overload capacity of the machine so your q is equal to q is equal to your 5000 to 45000 ampere ampere conductor per meter so here we can write write down overload capacitance if your q is high your z is high and your number of turns increase then what happens your xl increases once your xl increases what happens high high xl reduces the overload overload capacity of the machine capacity of the machine hope you have understood how it is related how the output equation what we designed first we have written the normal formula for the output equation the kva kva we have expressed it in terms of 3 v phase i phase in 10 power minus 3 okay uh, if we write in terms of line we can write root 3 v v line into i line divided by again so you in terms of line it would be root 3 v line i line in 10 power minus 3 whether it is connected in star or it's connected in phase but here we are interested in the calculation of the phase and we are here in uh, interested in expressing your electrical dimensions into magnetic and mechanical uh, dimensions so what we have written is initially we have started with the equation we have written q is equal to 3 into v phase into i phase in 10 power minus 3 then the equation for v phase which we have previously studied uh, in the previous courses in fourth semester in the ac machinery we have seen v phase is 4.44 f times your frequency number of turn into t phase t phase is number of turns per phase into your uh, again 10 power minus 3 is that part but v phase is only 4.44 into your f into your phi into your t phase into your kw now from that uh, what we have done is we have expressed f in terms of the number of poles that is ns by 2 into p similarly we have expressed phi in terms of uh, specific magnetic loading and again we have expressed t phase in terms of its other parameters which we have seen and we have some sub back substituted those things and finally we get an expression wherein your kva is equal to c not d square l ns so and after that we have seen what are the factors the magnetic loading how does it affect electrical loading how does it affect so listen to my previous lectures and remember the notes which i have provided in the class revise i'll be soon giving you some problems on transformers uh, on shell type transformers we have to see for the main dimension calculation i'll be putting one or two problems and i'll uh, i'm expecting you people to solve because i have to give some marks for your assignment and i hope a more number of people will be joining on google uh, uh, class because it's very important till now i am finding only 79 people have joined so hope you are uh, studying and at the same time keeping yourself uh, calm and uh, not becoming restless and uh, it's just a matter of month uh, i calculated and uh, maybe uh, may mid may it would be over Thank you very much and stay connected stay safe stay at home take care